Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you, as always, by tutvid.com. Today, it's going to be a little bit of a simple tutorial, pretty basic, but I think useful for those of you that will find it useful. We're going to do a basic text layout in Adobe Photoshop for creating credits for a video. I did a Premiere Pro tutorial on how to create scrolling credits, and I mentioned in there, I believe I mentioned in there, that I would do this Photoshop tutorial uh, if this was the way you preferred to lay out your text credits. It's certainly an option. We're going to take a look at how to do it. Well, you see these text credits just rolling right past me here. We're going to take a look at how to do this here in Photoshop. Check it out right now. All right, so here we are in Adobe Photoshop. Again, here's kind of the basics of what you saw scrolling by on the screen. And we're going to create this type of file. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. The first thing we do is go File, New. And there's a couple of sort of important things you want to do here, even when you're creating your document. You really want the width of your document to be the width of your video frame. So if you're doing like 2K, you would probably do 2560 wide by whatever length. Uh, if you're doing like your standard 4K, what that's 3, uh, 3840, excuse me. Um, or there's the, is it UHD that's considered 4096? Whoop, that's that's bigger than UHD. Uh, 4096. I'm gonna I'm working with standard 1080p in this case, hypothetically. So I'm going to go 1920 wide. And then the height can be whatever. You can see here, uh, let's say this is 1920 wide. It's, you know, like 5,000 pixels tall because we're only going to see a little piece of it at a time as it kind of scrolls through the window of the TV screen or the, the monitor or phone or whatever that our our video has been played on. So I'm going to say 5,000 height. A resolution of 72 is fine. I'm going to set the background to black uh, just because that's what I'm going to be using here and I'm going to create this document. Here we go. We've got a new document and the first thing I'm going to do is go view and I'm going to choose new guide layout. Not new guide, new guide layout. And here what I want to do is I want to create columns and rows. So I want two columns, two rows. I don't want any gutter. The gutter is just going to be annoying. So I'm going to get rid of the gutter. Um, I actually could use a gutter, but I'm not going to. We're going to go with just two two columns, two rows. Uh, and then a margin. We want to go with a margin of like, let's go with like 100 pixels. So I'm going to say 100 pixels on each side, something like that. And I'm going to hit OK. So we've got a nice basic set of grids laid down for us. Now, over here in text edit, I have all of my cast filled out. So I've got directed by, written by, produced by, so on, and then the names of those people right next to it, all right? And then I've got sort of a break, and that's going to be casting in order of appearance, and then we've got, you know, the character Jackson, Casey, Malcolm, Chase, Bailey, so on and so forth, and that's played by Grant Willis, Lena Shelton, and so on and so forth, and then crews, and, you know, these people, audio, post-production, design, special thanks to. So things like that, these are all of our credits. This is the stuff that really takes time, is kind of gathering all this information. Once it comes time to put it together in Photoshop, you'll see it's going to go kind of quick. So now that we have our guides in place, I am going to just take this first bit here, directed by and so on and so forth, and copy it, Command or Control C, and I hit uh, the wrong button, Command or Control C, there we go. And I'm going to go view, I'm going to make sure that snapping is turned on, and I'm snapping to my guides, because when I grab my text tool here, and uh, I'm going to, I just basically want to drag out a text field, and by the way, I'm holding down the space bar, and that's what's allowing me to move my text field. I want it to start at the top, and I'm just going to drag out a big old block of text, and hit Command or Control V to paste everything in place. Now I'm going to commit the change. Doesn't look like anything's happened because we got a black background, black text. You know, hey, you understand, right? So the first thing we'll do is open up our character panel. By the way, that's Window character. And I'm going to change the color. So I'm going to select color. I'm going to say, yeah, make that white. And you can see it's a bit of a mess. Don't worry. I'm going to select here for my font. I'm going to type out League. I'm going to go for League Spartan. So League Spartan Bold right there is going to work for us. And what I want to do is say, uh, yeah, let's go ahead with the, the height of our text. We're going to make it, or not really height, size of our text, I should say. We're going to make this 24 point. And maybe 24 points a little small. Maybe we'll go like 50. So there we go, something like 50 looks decent. And I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead and auto, give me auto line height just so I know I've got good spacing. And then I'm going to hit this little button here. This is the all caps button. That's going to make sure everything is capitalized, every single letter. We're going to go to our paragraph panel, and I'm going to say, look, don't center this. I want you to just, or not justify, excuse me, align to the right. So there we go. We're aligned to the right, just pulling all that stuff into the center, all right? Don't worry about the fact that it's pressed right up against the line. We're going to deal with that in a moment. What I'm going to do is now grab the names that belong next to this command or control C again drag out another text field and I'm going to once again going to hold down space bar and just pop that upward a little bit I'm going to command or control V to paste this in place and you can see we've got our league gothic bold everything's looking good the problem is we don't want this right aligned we want this left aligned just like that now you can see where the issue is, right? If I zoom in, this stuff, it's just pressed together too, it's too close, I think. I'm going to hit Command or Control and the semicolon key. That's going to make my guides disappear for a second. 
you can see, you know what, actually, it isn't too bad. I, I think I, I might just stick with that. I kind of like the way it looks. We can always come back and adjust it later. You can see here, we have now laid out our first block of text. So let's move down a little bit. I'm going to go back to my text edit. I'm going to get this next casting in order of appearance a bit of text. I'm going to grab my text tool here and uh, let's go ahead and just drag our text all the way across. Again, it's going to snap between the guides just like that. And then just command or control V to paste that in place, right? I'm going to hit the little check icon to commit the change. I'm going to say go ahead and center align that, right? That looks pretty decent. I'm going to say character. Uh, I'm going to go with maybe not 50. Maybe I'll go with like 24 here. Right, so that's man, maybe a little bit bigger than that. Let's maybe say 26. Just give it just a bump. There we go. Something like that looks pretty good. Now, one thing that I want to do is I want to zoom in on this here. And I really, I kind of want to try to keep this the same distance from the bottom of my text as it is above the next block of text. So if I hold down shift and hit the down arrow key, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, that's 100 pixels. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, that's 200 pixels. So do I want 200? Maybe I only want 100. Nah, you know what? I'll go with 200. What the heck? Let's see how this works. All right, so I've got that in place. That's great. I'm going to go back to my text edit and see what's next. All right, so we've got our cast. So I'm going to take my next block of content here, command or control C. And really what we can do is we we can duplicate both of these layers of text because we're going to go with big text again here. So I'm going to select both these layers by shift clicking them, hold down alt or option and drag them up above. You can see now we've got our uh, sort of the, the production crew or maybe not pre-production crew you could say, but the you know director and stuff is there. Uh, but you know that, that, that part of our crew, I'm going to grab both of these. I'm going to pull them down and what I'm going to do, I'm holding down shift by the way, that's making it pull straight down. I'm going to click these to the bottom of the in order of appearance because we want to knock these down 200 pixels. So I'm going to hold down shift and tap the down arrow key. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There we go. So we're 200 pixels below and we're all aligned nicely there. And now what I'll do, I'll just double click on the letter T over here to load up and highlight all the text there and then command or control V to paste all that text into place. Look at that. So easy. Let's go back to text edit. Let's grab the names of our actors here. Boom. Go back here. Double click on the, the names, command or control V. And there we go. We have those in place. Once again, we'll hide our rulers, command and the uh, the semicolon or control and the semicolon key. And you can see what we've got. We've got the makings of a nice little bit of text credits. So let's go ahead. Whoops, I did just sort of detached my tab there. <laughs> let's go ahead and add some more names here. So I'm going to go back to the text edit. And now we need to say cruise. And maybe what I'll do beneath cruise so we can keep the sort of open close parenthesis thing going. We'll say they uh, make it all work. Something like that, right? And I'll grab that. Commander Control C. And now what we'll do is we'll duplicate the casting in order of appearance. Alter Option click and drag it up. And then we're going to drag this down. And what I'm going to do, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's hitting the down arrow key while also holding down shift. Double click the letter T, command or control V to paste in the crews that make it all work. Great. And if I take a look at text edit, you can see that we've got the camera crew, we got our audio crew, we got our post production folks, and we've got our, our design and motion graphics people. There's four blocks of, of people. So I think I'm going to make all this text uh, kind of smaller. Um, not that they're any less important, but just, you know, we're, we're going to make it smaller just so we can change up our layout. I'm going to hit command or control and the semicolon key. And what I'll do is I will grab my text tool and I'm going to drag out a block of text just on one side like that. And what I'll do, I'll jump back to text edit here. I'm going to grab my camera information, my camera people information, double click on layer one. It's going to preserve that box for me and then command or control V to paste it in place. Now, this is kind of exactly how I want it. I want it center aligned, which it is. And I think I want it to be the same size as the cruise. They make it all work text just to kind of keep everything, you know, sort of uniform here. So what I'll do now, I'm going to make sure that this is 200 pixels beneath that they make it all work. So I'm going to hold down shift, tap the down arrow key, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There we go. Something like that. It's really kind of wonky the way some of the spacing stuff works in Photoshop. It's really kind of embarrassing, to be honest. Uh, but hey, we're working with what we've got. All right, I'm going to go back to text edit here. I'm going to take, uh, let's go with the audio, folks. I'm going to copy that. 
I'm going to jump back into Photoshop. And let's just keep the camera director here, right? So I'm going to select after Tanya Ruiz's name, and I'm going to hit enter, return one, two, three, four, five times, and we'll paste the audio, folks. There we go. And then I'll commit that change. And there we go. We've got camera and audio people. And now all I need to do is select this camera director of photography uh, block of text and drag it over to the right side. So hold down Alter Option and drag it straight over while holding down Shift, and I'll feel it snap into place, or at least I should feel it snap into place somewhere right around there. I can double check by hitting Command or Control T, and you can see, yes, in fact, the edges of our text box are exactly aligned with our guides. That's great. And now it's just a matter of grabbing all this. I can grab all these good people. And I can go back over to here and paste it in place. And then what I'll do is just add enough open lines that we have two lines of text above our blue line there. So let me just enter to return just like that. And you can see by blue line, I meant guide. Uh, and there we go. Now everything is lined up beautifully. And we have just a little change up thrown into the middle of our credit creation. Uh, kind of something a little bit like that. And basically, I would go over the rest of these credits just like that. I might keep text small at this point. I might make text big again. It all depends on the credits what the what the filmmaker wants or what the project calls for but we would just go through and quickly hammer out all the rest of these credits and yeah there you have it i mean you can see it really doesn't take that long once you do it once, you know, you, you can kind of do it uh, in your sleep, so to speak. Uh, pretty simple to do. But of course, at this point, it's time to get it over to Adobe Premiere Pro. I like to just export it as an image, but you do have some options. So if we were to just export this now, if I were to like, I don't know, go file, export, and say, hey, export as, we got a couple little issues we need to tackle here because check this out. Uh, well, I export the whole entire document, but it's got the black background, which of course might not be a problem. Your film might fade to black and you just have a black background and that's what's expected. But maybe you don't, or maybe you want the black background to be created in Premiere or you have a, you know, it's just quite not black or something like that. It might be super duper duper dark gray and you want a transparent background. Of course, you can export this. You can say, look, save it out as a JPEG, black background, 100% quality, boom, I'm good. I can see my width is going to be 10, uh, 1920 by 5000 height, looking good, looking great. I'm ready to roll. However... If we don't want the black background, we can shut that layer off and we can go file, export, and choose export as. And you can see here, we now have our document 1920 by 5000. Transparent background, looking good, looking strong. If you want the transparent background, by the way, you have to export as a PNG. It's got the best transparency. Make sure you turn transparency on or check that on, I should say. And then you just choose export all. Choose where you want to save it to on your hard drive, and you will get a great little set of uh, text-based credits that you've created in Photoshop. If this is where you're more comfortable working, here's a nice little way to create credits that are easy to animate as one solid group, easy to align, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. It's especially helpful if you're just not really comfortable with the Premiere uh, shape-building tools and everything that's going on in there. You can always use something like Photoshop. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You can see it's it's not necessarily complicated. It's just a lot of like little pushing and pulling things. Really the bulk of the work with credit creation I found is just the tediousness of typing out the names and you know what the person did. That's kind of the time consuming part. Once you've got the data, throwing it into making it look pretty or whatever you're going to do with it, eh, it's not too difficult. But this is how uh, I would do it in Photoshop, um, and that's how you can do it in Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a thing or two. If you use Instagram, make sure you follow me over on Instagram because there's always cool stuff happening over on Instagram. Ladies and gentlemen, for taking a look at some guides and some text and some aligning, and I don't know, there's really not a whole lot to it. It's a pretty basic tutorial, but a lot of fun in its own right for this one and so much more. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanoDodson.vid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.